I welcome you all to the Sadhana theme of our Bhakti Pravesha program. This is session 12. And in this session, we are going to learn a very important topic and a very relevant topic of the current day world. <clears throat> that is social media and its effect on relationships. So in this session, we are going to discuss three aspects. The disadvantages and also followed by the advantages and some dead ends that we meet in using social media. So it is a known fact in the current day world, uh, you know, we cannot do without this. Yes, in fact, uh, in the current day teenagers are, you know, having full blown relationships just with this, you know, uh, how many inches is this? One and a half or, you know, two inch by five inch gadget. Yeah, full fledged from A to Z. You don't need anything external. So uh, in this way, I mean, you know, relationships that are concerned, that are considered so sacred, uh, which are formed by a lot of deliberation, a lot of uh, discussions between the elders and the blessings of the Devi Devatas and with a lot of rituals and with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, sense of taking responsibility towards a society. You know, this is a spirit in which a person gets into a relationships, especially the Vivaha Samskara, right? So uh, a bonding that is something so sacred, which is formed with so much of uh, thought, so much of uh, a conscious choice, a conscious effort, yeah, with so many people involved, yeah, invoking the auspiciousness and the grace of uh, the, the elders, the superiors, the higher powers, you know, some a, a bonding that is so sacred is now, you know, it's so limited. You know, it has it has been made so limited to mere chatting and uh, and you know in the process one uh, inve one invests so much of one's uh, in emotional energies into it yeah and the result is you know with the given amount of emotional investment one is putting in one is not getting returns in terms of satiation because there is no connection to all these external factors, yeah? The boy connects to the girl on the chat, yeah? And there is absolute, <clears throat> there is a bonding that is formed. And that bonding is based on a mutual understanding. Yeah, and uh, you know, the and very quickly people uh, get to know each other, their, their good side, the bad side, very e easily people become intimate and very, you know, easily people go to the next steps in the relationships. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's all happening in a closed room, you know, your own space. So, as I said, this is a, this is a, uh, you know, and after forming this bond, um, over a period of time, what the two partners face is a dead end in the relationship. It doesn't move any further. Yeah. Then what's the next thing to do? Stop dating with the current person and start and dating another person. Yeah. So this is how relationships are becoming very brittle, and uh, you know they're dying so fast in the current day, and it's a major concern around the world. And uh, the, the the studies have been very uh, alarming and depressing. You know, the way, uh, the direction in which the, the relationship quotient is moving forward. So, so uh, yeah, what I spoke is actually the bonding between two people. But first, I would like to start with how it affects, uh, how it is affecting people in general. Uh, excessive usage of social media is, uh, has been proved to develop feelings of jealousy, 
insecurity and comparative tendencies and a boost of uh, an artificial boost of ego in some people. So we will discuss each of these uh, points in detail. So it is shown that the first thing, uh, excessive usage of social media is uh, making people prone to negative feelings like jealousy. Yeah, very easily. So this is why, because every other person posts a display picture uh, which shows a very happy side or a success, successful side of theirs. Yeah. And uh, that is in turn, uh, it creates a kind of uh, a, 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 a feeling of inadequacy if a person is comparative. <laughs> like or generally there is a comparative tendency inherent in every normal human being. But comparative tendency is artificially flared up too much because of the usage of social media, wherein you have access to too many people and too many profiles and who are all showing their bright side. Yeah, a, you know, family pick at a, you know, a, a great spot or, you know, their own achievements or, you know, their bright side, which is, which is a, there is a positive side to it as well. But as a browser, uh, on the other side, if I'm spending all my day just, you know, going through all their success stories, if there is a tendency for such, if, if one is not mature enough or one is not uh, capable enough to absorb others' success in a positive way, in a spirit of learning, in a spirit of taking inspiration, there's a tendency for a person to fall into the, uh, you know, a kind of, hmm, a pit, uh, you know, a pothole of what is called an unhealthy comparison trap. Yeah, the result of which is feeling of inadequacy. One feels oneself, I'm not enough. I should be something more. I should be someone else. Yeah, I, if I uh, develop more, uh, you know, if I get little more likes or, you know, more followers, uh, you know, more subscribers, then, you know, then I would uh, begin to uh, understand, I mean, begin to achieve success. Yeah, then I will become successful. So these are the kind of uh, feelings of jealousy that so excessive usage of social media is inciting, especially in young adults. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a trap that one has to be aware. Yeah. So, uh, so this jealousy springs from the fact that, you know, okay, the other person, and, you know, the, uh, especially the teenagers have something called FOMO. F-O-M-O. I don't know if you've heard of it. What is FOMO? Fear of missing out. That is, uh, you know, when, you, when your friends post a picture in Insta or wherever, you know, Facebook, whichever social media, that, you know, they're at a big event, let's say at a cricket ground or a movie theater or on a mountain or at some best hot spot, yeah, or all of them going out on some kind of a holiday, they post a picture. So immediately you might be doing your own work, engaging in your own studies, or you know, you have some uh, deadline to catch up with, and you see this picture and immediately, oh, I'm not there. Yeah, there's a lot of fear that comes in, you know, the tendency of the fear of what missing out. So because of this, you know, the, the person is immediately distracted from one's uh, own job. How many of you have experienced it? You don't have to tell me. You can be honest with your own self. Yes. So in this way, uh, there is a lot of, uh, especially for one's uh, emotional quotient is fragile you know, and one is vulnerable, they get very much effect, affected by these kinds of posts. Yes, yeah. And it uh, it really uh, is building in this artificial feelings of jealousy. See, jealousy is inherent. We need to work on it. We need to reduce it. We need to overcome it. But this kind of your know, excessive usage of social media is flaring up. Yeah, one should flare up one's devotional spirit not the not these negative tendencies. The social media is potentially flaring up all these negative base tendencies in a person. Number one being jealousy. Yeah. And uh, 
So number two is a feeling of, as I said, inadequacy or insecurity. What is this insecurity? It is now. Uh, it has been uh, noted that um, couples, you know, especially they, uh, they are like micromanaging their partners yeah, by uh, always going through their messages, their uh, accounts, their social media, you know, whatever, uh, whom they are sending their likes and what, uh, you know, whom they are following. You know, this kind of excessive following, <laughs> e-following has become too much. So because of this, actually, uh, there have uh, been a marked rise in the you know, uh, number of divorces. Yeah, one of the reasons being social uh, excessive usage of social media and using it as a mechanism to, uh, to follow or you absolutely fragile yeah, because of the instability that they are going through. And of course, uh, it all, uh, and everybody, I mean, it's a common picture yeah, uh, in today's day and age that, you know, in one single house under the same roof, your people are sitting together, but each is absorbed in their own world. They are texting, they're busy texting their own friends. They hardly even look at each other. Yes, and this is so much against the principle of, uh, you know, that comes from this famous story. I don't know how many of you have heard this story. Very important story. Uh, I will just uh, tell this story. It's very instructive. Recently, I was teaching this um, to seventh grade kids. So once upon a time, they lived a king. Yeah. And he wanted to know the answer for three questions. How many of you know this story? In class. How many of you know, know this story of the king and the three questions? Okay, great. So, so it's a very nice story, very interesting story. <clears throat> so there was a king and he wanted to know answer to Three questions. So what are those three questions? What is the most important time? Yeah, to start anything. And second, who is the most important person in one's life? Yeah. And number three is what is the most important thing to do? Yeah. So he had these three questions. What is the most important time? Who is the most important person? And who, what is the most important thing to do? So he want, he really wanted to know the answer to these three questions. And he spoke to many stalwarts in his own you know, minister board. But how many answers he has received, he was not convinced. Nobody gave him answers that really convinced him to the core. So uh, he, uh, he actually even... Uh, announced in the whole kingdom that whoever gives me convincing answers to these questions will get a great reward. So many people visited the king and they have tried to, you know, explain from different points of view as what's the best time or, you know, some people said that, you know, astrologically, you know, so on, so stellar constellation, you know, this is the best time to do anything. One should consult, consult an astrologer or somebody said early morning hours and somebody said, you know, just at the time of sunset. So many answers he got, but he was not convinced. And some people said, who's the most important person? You know, that person who counsels you when you need them the most, you know, uh, that's the most important person. Somebody said mother, somebody said father, you know, like that he received many answers. So what's most important thing to do, he, you know, so he got many answers for that too. But none of the answers could really convince him thoroughly. So one day he himself left the kingdom, you know, in disguise. Yeah. He dressed himself in rags. He, th he thought for himself, I will myself find out the answers to these questions. So then he walked and he reached the outskirts of his kingdom. 
Yeah. So when he reached the outskirts of the kingdom, uh, he saw a small hermitage. So that at that hermitage, he saw uh, a man. You know, he was uh, he looked very saintly, and he was digging earth in front of his home. So this king went to went who was uh, disguised. He went to this hermit, and he asked him, you know, oh sir, uh, I have three questions which have been bothering me. Can you please answer me? So the hermit didn't pay attention. He was just continuing to dig. Then the king, um, you know, stopped by and, you know, he, he thought, you know, Are this person is doing digging all alone. Let me help him. So when he was helping him, then, you know, a stranger came by, you know, who was uh, like stabbed. So the king, uh, who's in disguise, when he saw him wounded because he was a warrior and he knew how to dress uh, soldiers who are hurt. He dressed that person's wound, you know, and stopped it to bleed. So that person recovered and he was very grateful to the king and, you know, paying obeisances to him and saying, expressing his gratitude and uh, saying that he would be his servant for the rest of his life. And, you know, he left. So uh, the king was amazed, you know, why is he pouring out his gratitude a little on an excessive end? Yeah. So next day, the, uh, you know, the, the sun sets and it's the next day. And the king, you know, again sees the hermit and he asks him, you know, can you please answer my questions? If you don't answer, I will leave. <clears throat> so, uh, so the hermit begins to speak. Uh, so he asked, do you know the person who came to you yesterday? Uh, and he said, no, I don't know him. He says, he's actually your enemy who came to kill you. But your soldiers saw him on the spot, I mean, uh, at the, uh, in the outskirts, and they actually stabbed him. So he, he was so, uh, he so much wanted to take revenge that he came all the way here with whatever life that was left to actually take revenge and kill you. But you had actually helped that person by dressing his wounds and winning his heart. So, uh, and you know, uh, so at that time, uh, so he said, so did you find, did you now understand what are the answers to your questions? The king like kind of thought, uh, maybe, but can you please explain? So he said, the most important person is the person whom you are with. And the most important thing to do is to do good to that person, no matter who that person is. And the most important time is now, the current moment. And this time is to be spent with the most important person is who is the person who is with you. And the most important thing to do is actually do good to that person. This uh, appears to be a small and simple story, but this is very, very deep. I have in my life seen some people who really practice this. And people who practice this, they are so lively and they connect to people so much. Recently, in one of my, uh, uh, you know, courseworks, I have come across a professor. Looking at whom and the way he interacted with everybody, I saw him actually as a person who's following all these three. The way he connects to people, the way he interacts with them, at that moment, with that person, he, he, you know, he used to give full attention to them, making them feel very, very important. And at that time, in that given situation, he used to put his heart into doing something really good to that person, making that person feel happy, joyful, blissful. Or, you know, his, and his presence is, you know, he's just simply change the entire environment. So please try to, and, and you know, I had never seen this person with his smartphone, at least externally. So these, uh, uh, so 
I mean, I, I understand the, the need for a smartphone and, you know, the need of for looking at it a couple of times to understand what's happening and the reminders that we get. But try this simple thing of following these three, uh, you know, the three answers that the thing has received. Yeah, the most important time is now. 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 You know what is now? Being fully in this moment. What is being fully in this moment? I am not thinking about the past with some regret. I am not thinking about the future. What will I do after the class? When will this class end? What is the time now? No, that is not now. Now is a time when you are here with me, hearing what I am speaking mindfully. This is now. You know, to experience this space of now is such a meditation. It's so difficult to get here into the space of now. Yes, try it. it it's with actually with a lot of effort we come to this space called now. 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 And who's the most important person? The person whom you are with. So right now it's each other. Whoever is with me, Roshni, Madhushri, Sinduja, Shalini, Meghna, Ankita, yeah, Alka, Jyotsna. So beautiful Jyotsna. So this is, you're all the most important person. And what's the most important thing to do is to do good to that person. In whichever way, do good doesn't necessarily mean that I have I should have an upper hand. Whatever makes the other person happy. If you're just a little sensitive about it, we can know what will make the other person happy. So just follow this, this one principle. This and let me know how it has affected your life. And a serious threat to this particular thing is unscrupulous usage of social media. Social media does have its advantage. Right now, we're all meeting on this Zoom call because of social media. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we have an access uh, that is making us meet. So there is the advantage part, which we'll discuss in the, you know, in the later part. So... Uh, the way, you know, a person gets into this bottomless scroll, you know, especially watching reels, etc. It's, it is making the person, you know, get into a, get, in, get sucked into a black hole. I mean, I don't know if any of you know what is a black hole in the space. Yeah. In the space, there, there is something called black holes. Yeah. Whatever goes there is not found. It just gets sucked in. So, Social media is like that black hole. It sucks what? Our consciousness. Chuck. And, you know, and we become like uh, possessed, you know, hypnotized. Just like in hypnosis, we do whatever the other person says. Social media just hypnotizes with these reels. And we're like just, you know, that possessed ghosts. You know, we just keep on scrolling one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. Endlessly. And actually, uh, you can yourself experience when your when the mind is very much engrossed in that way. After some time, we become so disoriented. We can't even relate to people around us. Mummy will be calling us for lunch or dinner. Uh, you know, friends might just come and remind us of something and say, huh, huh. you know, you're there, but not there. Yeah, absolute disorientation. There is no... Uh, you know, there is a person who, uh, whom you are supposed to be with. There's no connection. So these are some dangers of social media. If we do not, if you're not alert to use them in a practical way. It's just like the, you know, knife. A knife in the surgeon's hand, you know, can save a life. The same knife in the hand of a murderer can take a life. So is social media. Yeah. 
if we do not know how to utilize it purposefully, you know, it can really take us for a ride and and destroy us in you know by taking us away from our own self. Yeah, what is social media doing? It's taking us away from ourselves. So the third thing that the social media is mostly, this is one more danger, is uh, artificially puffed up ego. Yeah. So, um, you know, in the Mahabharat, we have uh, learned recently, somebody was presenting this uh, story of the Mahabharat. Yeah, the, all the signs of Kali Yuga. So one of the sign of Kali Yuga is that, you know, it is uh, seen that um, uh, there are uh, uh, people who have uh, less substance, less knowledge, they are more famous. Yeah. And people who are more knowledgeable and more wise, who carry a lot of wisdom, they are less famous. Yeah, and this is absolutely something we see today and on social media. People who are, I mean, I mean, there are already I mean, ex exceptions, but we see that you no know, people have a lot of fame and following. Not, need not necessarily always be the people who are you know the wisest or you know are really knowledgeable. Yeah. So, uh, so this is uh, and and even at the level of you know the students or uh, you know young adults sometimes uh, you know there is an artificial hike of you know having a puffed up ego without getting into the deserving mode yeah so this can actually uh, be very detrimental to one's uh, attitudes of respect towards elders because of this uh, building of an artificially puff, puffed up ego. Yeah, where, you know, uh, where social media prematurely makes people, you know, very famous or, you know, heroic or accomplished, so-called accomplished, you know, accomplished without, uh, without substance. <laughs> yeah. So this is another danger of uh, having developing an artificially puffed up ego. And because of these uh, ego, one uh, develops a shell around oneself. Yeah. And one cannot uh, mingle with their own peers, you know, in an attitude of friendliness. Yes. Uh, so this is another danger and pitfall one has to be very careful with. Yes, uh, so I have spoken about four, that is jealousy, uh, insecurity. Yeah. <clears throat> Third is uh, development of ego and uh, not being with the, in the present. Yeah, inability to be in the present. So these are all some uh, dangers of social media and how they are affecting relationships. As I said, in friends, it is, uh, you know, there is a tendency to uh, of you know developing jealousy and uh, you know comparison so, so much of comparisons like you know how many likes do i have how many likes do you have how many followers do i have how many followers do you have yeah this kind of comparison and, uh, and spending too much of time in that in that world in that virtual world you know it's a uh, it, it's detaching one from the reality of one's existence and detaching one from actually being contemplative and being in touch with one's inner conscience. Yeah. So, uh, so this is some uh, a very serious uh, uh, danger that have that one should be aware of and help oneself from not falling into it. And uh, yeah, now I will just come to the positives that there are also, of course, advantages. And of course, I mean, this is, I'm talking about uh, um, the college students and young adults and at the level of children, there are many, many more um, issues. I mean, I'll talk about mothers. Yeah, so mothers uh, earlier as a, I mean, I'll tell my own experience as a child when I was uh, three to four year old uh, or four, four to five year old, yeah. I used to go on my own, all alone, from my home 
to a, a shop yeah which is about 10 minutes walk from my home yeah there was a straight road i used to go walking i used to go to that shop and uh, i used to take money and i used to buy things some groceries it's not a supermarket it's like a shop and i used to buy the groceries like whatever peanuts or cashew nuts anything and i used to come home and i used to give my mummy yeah this was when i was in my first grade so but now my my own daughter she's in third grade i, I can't think of sending her like that yeah go buy something no you don't send any you don't say <laughs> i mean i i don't i mean most of the parents too they think you're sending their kids out alone yeah if they go then they, somewhere they have to be around their uh you know purview and you know they have to be always accessible via mobile uh, as kids like you know it is said that you know we used to sometimes without telling we used to bunk college go to a, a movie nothing was known but now there is so much of follow up <laughs> you, you are sitting at a place maybe watching a movie or enjoying with your friends and you get a call where are you worse to turn on your video crazy it is so much of micro managing so much of i mean you know if kids are over protected like that uh, you know they actually uh, i mean they don't feel it as a protection but it, they feel it's like a control there is a thin line of difference between protecting someone and controlling someone so the, the social media is making people more and more uh, get into the mode of a controller because everything is within you know your own view you can see a lot of things you can uh, follow a person you can uh, be aware of their whereabouts what they are doing where they are at this you know point of time you know this is it, it gets sense of controllership yeah and so in the name of protection being protective one can also become a uh, get into a controller mode and this controller mode is very very suffocating to the other party so you know these are some uh, very very subtle evils of social media please be aware because tomorrow they would be in, into relationships you know with the spouse and cause will be mothers and you know uh, so and especially being mothers of grown up children it's very important to give them make them feel that they are trusted if you make, if you, if you don't make them feel that you know they are trusted uh, that you trust them they rebel you know they try to either they they do two things they rebel outright or they do things what they want without telling they have their own ways of doing it yeah so especially to uh, you know when the when a child enters a teenage it's very important for them to make make them feel that yes i trust you and i trust uh, what you do just you know when they simply get that feeling that yes you know my mom trust me or my dad trust me they really become very responsible even if they make you know one or two mistakes here and there they become very responsible adults so social media is one such gadget which can spoil this relationship you know by breaking that thin line of difference between uh, you know concern and control controllership so uh, so that's how you know one should know and how to what extent one should use social media yes and one should be judicious in, in one's usage yeah so this is like uh, as far as how it has been affecting relationships at different realms between friends between uh, spouses between parents and children you know uh, this is how uh, it's been uh, affecting and impacting what to speak of workplace yeah workplace <laughs> these days there is no difference between uh, uh, office and home yeah there is no difference you know the line of uh, timeline between personal life and professional life is slowly dwindling some people see it as an advantage but there is a great disadvantage even to this yeah and this is causing a lot of uh, imbalance in the work life balance of every individual yeah because uh, studies are showing that uh, people may go out on a holiday but still you know they are not switching off from their work 
So because of that, a person does not go into a, complete, a sense of complete relaxation. Yeah. Like I'll, uh, I'll give you a small example. It's just that, uh, you know, uh, you, when you shut down your system, when you do not close all the windows, you know, the programs are running behind. Your system is not truly shut, shut off. So, so is it, it you know, you're, uh, you have, you're taken a holiday, but you know, you have your work going on because of you have an access, you have a, a hotspot, uh, you have your laptop, you're still working. So that holiday is not really a holiday. So because there is no, because of not having this uh, uh, compartmentalization of personal life and professional life because of, you know, this work from home, especially which came in because of during the COVID time. Uh, you know, uh, um, the, there is uh, there has been um, you know uh, reports that people are not pursuing hobbies, and those uh, employees uh, who don't uh, pursue their hobbies over a period of time, their creativity and productivity comes down very much. They become very mechanical in their jobs, yeah, and in the, even in uh, in the outputs that they give. So it's, it's very important. There is a you know very uh, close relationship between how one uh, spends one's leisure. Yeah, and and it you know it, and it's in, there is a direct impact of that on your productivity at work. Yeah. So the more relaxed, the more you enjoy your leisure in an appropriate way, the more it has its um, effect on your productivity at your job place, at your workplace. So the more these two are not delineated, uh, the more you uh, mix, you know, leisure time and work time. That means at work time, you're trying to engage in some kind of fun. And at fun time, you're trying to bring in work. You know, there's a lot of mix up of these two. So this, it, this decreases the productivity of a person and creativity of a person. Yeah, so this is another danger of uh, social media, and it's uh, and uh, as a result of this, uh, you know, the leisure time, uh, which is actually the time for bonding with the family members, is not happening effectively. Yeah, so although this person is present physically with them, but you know, he's totally he or she is totally disconnected because they are in their own job. Yeah, they have not wound up their job. They have they're still carrying their job. They have their laptop in their job. So there's no connection that is happening between family members and the uh, person who is working. So this is another danger with, uh, you know, uh, the social media. And it's uh, how it's affecting relationship with these family members, especially when the person is working. So given these uh, uh, disadvantages, okay, I'll also speak something about the advantages. Uh, there are also there's also bright side to the social media, of course, um, uh, and you know some of the advantages being it you know in sometimes there are long distance relationships these days when you know let's say parents and the children are studying elsewhere in a distant area. You know there's a feeling of a lot of homesickness, especially the study abroad. You know, getting in touch through video calling, it's etc gives them that feeling of connection, long distance relationships. Yes, and also that in the connectivity, you know, the at a at a way international level, you know, that has been made possible by the uh, social media. Yeah. So that's a if you you if you utilize it for in an uh, in an appropriate way, it's a great advantage. Yeah, the, the kind of connectivity that you can uh, develop, networking that you can do, uh, it can if it can be used positively, and especially if you have uh, something positive to give to this world, uh, you know, social media is amazing. That you know that that uh, the positive message, especially the message of Krishna, the a spiritual uh, me uh, message that can really help others, that can save others' lives. Yeah, if, uh, if, that, if that can reach out to more and more, if social media is such a boon, such a blessing, such a great blessing it is. 
Yeah. Because, you know, Nagar, Nagar Sankirtan, what is Sankirtan? Sankirtan is to spread the message of Gita, of Bhagavad Gita, of the Lord, Supreme Lord Krishna to everyone. And social media is such a powerful medium to do that. Very, very powerful. Can you imagine the kind of uh, outreach it has? Yeah, we, right. I'm right here and it, you know, with one click, I can reach out to millions. So social media, it has that power. If we only know how to utilize it properly. Yeah, the connectivity part. <clears throat> and there are many instances, uh, you know, there are some, let's say there are, uh, and how it is affecting relationships. Yes, there are so many uh, um, relationship uh, saviors uh, or, you know, uh, concepts of psychology and bonding and relationship that have been posted on, so, posted on social media, which is giving direction to so many seekers, you know, where they're getting stuck. You know, how to resolve frictions, how to resolve conflicts more positively. So there is a lot of material which is very helpful to improvise relationships on the social media. There are many videos, uh, you know, that are, uh, that, I, you know, that give us the knowledge of how to improve relationships. So social media has uh, its own uh, uh, positivity, you know, its, its own great advantages in the kind of uh, knowledge that it is spreading, the awareness that it is spreading. Yeah, so there's a lot of awareness this today, uh, you know, amongst people about, uh, you know, the importance of living in harmony with nature, you know, certain sciences, hmm, you know, like astrology and uh, numerology, you know, the and, but one thing, there is an, the, the other side of it is, when people prematurely try to learn things under the, you know, without the guidance of a teacher, without properly surrendering to a teacher, it's like undigested food. You know, they don't know how to use it and, you know, it gives indigestion. And it's a, you know, undigested food is always harmful to a body. Similarly, too much knowledge, if it's not uh, taken through the medium of a good teacher, it can actually become dangerous. So one has to be very uh, mature and uh, uh, one has to be very careful yeah, while uh, operating social media, understanding its advantages and disadvantages, being aware of the disadvantages, understanding the advantages and, uh, you know, utilize it like just like a surgeon and not like the criminal. So I will end here. Uh, so I, I thought because the, the topic is Sangha, association. Today, most of our association is our mobile phone. <laughs> yeah. So, leke sham tak, you know, I mean, raat tak. The last thing that, that is in our hand before we sleep is our mobile. The first thing we have in our hand is the mobile. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, it's, it's, it's very important, you know, and we need to understand that there is no difference in terms of consciousness between a person whom we are interacting with and people who are on the mobile. Like, for example, you wake up in the morning and you, you're still, uh, you know, in the semi-sleep uh, kind of a situation. Would you like if a lot of people just barge into your bedroom and start looking at you and, you know, uh, you know, uh, doing their own things? You wouldn't like it, right? You need your space when you wake up. You know, when you're, when you immediately, when you wake up, uh, I think uh, Ankita can tell us the brain is one in, uh, in which mode she's doing some sleep studies, right? Uh, yes. at, at the time of waking, which um, wave is it? Beta? Um, and, um, REM and non REM stages, no, Mataji? Uh, after that, not the rapid eye moment uh, when when you wake up. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, so actually, it is said that just before you're sleeping and immediately, I mean, at exactly the time when you're waking up, the, the brain actually goes into the, uh, I think, alpha or gamma, you know, one kind of a stage wherein, you know, there is an, a direct access to the subconscious. You know, ah, yes. 
yeah in that uh, very brief period so you know but we are sleeping with our with mobile in our hand social media in our hand so the last thing when we are uh, sleeping dozing off you know is if it's a social media that's what is going into your subconscious and when you wake up you know you're you're not fully awake you're semi awake and the first thing that you do is you open your social media and you start seeing that's what is entering into your subconscious yeah so so these are some uh, habits that we need to cultivate yeah before we sleep at least 10 minutes with the mobile away. yeah so now i'll speak about you know uh, after having discussed the advantages disadvantages some things that we can do from our side you also can contribute to me if you're following something and uh, if it can help so as i said you know just before sleeping in, in time of just waking up your brain is in a sensitive stage where you know the doors are open to the subconscious so those sensitive periods are to be spent in doing a, a very uh positive activity like reading a book yeah reading some sacred book or it could be a, a spent in prayers simply prayers you know like when, as a child we always used to do this before sleeping we pray as soon as we wake up we pray yeah. so these two sensitive uh, because what whomever we are thinking of at that time that person will be you know entering our subconscious and whatever enters our subconscious actually it, 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 it is it, it, those those prints you know those impressions are with us for a long 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 time yeah whatever is stored in the subconscious memory so this is one ritual we can do second is you know in a day you know we can develop something called social media anonymous if you're students at college you can do uh, you can have some clubs like a social media anonymous club or you can use social media for some positive purposes like what we are doing right now you can start some reading clubs you know just come together and read a favorite book a positive book a very nice book you know it could be gita or some small books of uh, prabhupada or some interesting stories you know there are some very nice story books yeah uh, you can do you can read ramayan together yeah or mahabharat together and then start some reading clubs so that's a very positive way of using social media this is where your network can really help connect like minded people from different parts of the country yeah so sometimes it's very difficult to find uh, like minded people around us yeah the place where we stay but on social media you can connect to those like minded people from different parts of the country or the world and start some reading clubs so and uh, yeah and especially follow this uh, the three answers to the king's question yeah the most important person is whom you are with so if you are with somebody please unless it is very urgent and needed you know i'm also trying to cultivate this habit because sometimes many a times I, many of my services are <laughs> with this so i have to essentially scroll through uh, but consciously uh, you know uh, we need to put in this effort that when we are with some person put the mobile aside it's a sign of respect to that person yeah it's a sign of uh, showing your affection to that person to give one's complete attention to the person whom we are with even if that person is very familiar with us yeah so these are some uh, few thoughts that i had uh, i just i discussed about the advantages of social media the disadvantages and some hacks as to how to minimize or improvise our social media usage so i will end here i will just take one or two questions if anybody has and this uh, has a direct i why i discuss this topic is this has a direct relevance to our relation i mean our relationship with krishna <laughs> yes so yeah go ahead any questions any questions or comments hari krishna mataji dhanyavad pranams 
Hare Krishna Jyotsna. Yes. Yes, Madhuri, like here, uh, the most important thing to do is like, no matter who he is, we have to be good with the person. The king does not know that who came to him was his enemy, so he was good to him. But if the king has known that he is his enemy, would he treat him the same way? It is difficult to treat them with compassion. In most of the cases, we'll be with persons whom we don't feel heartfelt to behave. So how can we still pay that amount of attention and care to that person? Yes. So to do good is, uh, you know, to do your dharma. <clears throat> Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, I mean, in this story of the king and uh, uh, the enemy who came and, you know, who, who actually came to kill him, uh, somehow things uh, changed and, uh, and, you know, he helped him. And because of which that person got transformed. Because you know, King attentively uh, nursed him. Not he did good to that person, so he was out of that kingly guard. So, so the point here is when we utilize a given point of time to heartfully do good to the person, like and that good could be anything. Like for example, your your question is, if you are sitting with a person, and uh, what is the actual good? you do to that person is depending on the relationship you have with that person. Okay. The relation, the person can be a stranger or he could be your friend or that could, person could be your enemy or somebody whom you're irritated with, you know, not your, not very happy with, you know, always, you know, you feel that person is a jerk. You want to maintain distance with that person. So it could be anybody. Yeah. But at that moment, that person is with you. So what is the best thing you can do to that person? Yeah, if, if this is our meditation, you know, if you think, if you understand it, like how, what best can I do to this person? That itself will open the doors uh, for many avenues to you know how to conduct oneself in that situation. Is it the question you asked? What is your exact question? Yes, but like sometimes people mistreat us. They do some kind of harm. Uh, and if they are present with us, then we have to do good to them without thinking about the past. You always have this <laughs> trigger question. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> I don't know whom you're talking about. That person must be having some hiccups. <laughs> you often think of that person. <laughs> so, yeah. So as I said, uh, but I'll tell you, Jyotsna, uh, when we are with this conscience that uh, I want to, I'm, I really want to do good to this person. You know, you have this positive attitude. The, uh, the inner feeling that, you know, no, this person, yes, although he's doing bad or she's doing bad or, you know, she's been irritating and causing me troubles or uh, not being... Uh, the person whom I want them to be, not doing what I expect of that person, doing always contrary to my expectations, you know, always, you know, kind of making my space very stuffy, very suffocated. Uh, these are the things that, these are the natural feelings and uh, reactions we harbor towards some people. Just, you know, take a moment, detach yourself from those feelings, and think, this person is a sacred part and parcel of Krishna. Yeah, it, within his heart is, or her heart is Paramatma. Yeah. And can I do anything good for this person? Can I remove these uh, negative impressions that I have formed uh, due to my perceptions of what he or she has done? Yeah, can I detach from all those perceptions, free myself, keep my ego aside and think in terms of what best can I do to this person? I can at least start with being a well-wisher of this person. You know, praying for something good, no matter how bad a person is, you can still pray for that person. You know, may this person 
you know, be, be God conscious. That's the best prayer you can do for anyone. Yeah. May this person realize their own divinity. May this person access their own uh, divine nature. You can certainly pray this for anybody. Worst of enemy also, we can pray this. And when you actually know, when you start having these positive feelings for this person, you might not even express this. Yeah, for the same for the same person with whom you had negativity, if you're developing these positive feelings one by one, one by one, in installments, in a much deeper way, by by prayers and you know by uh, praying to Krishna to help you to come out of these negative feelings and praying to Krishna to help that person to become a better person, magically there will be a lot of difference in the chemistry between you and that person. You don't have to speak anything to that person. That person need not speak anything to you. It will be communicated. It will be communicated. And soon you will realize, you'll realize that, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, unpleasant vibes that were there in the past, they get wiped out. When you are building positive feelings for that person and you are wishing well for so a lot happens internally before it comes out externally. So try, pick up that one person, whoever is in the list, about, all, about whom, with whom you have a problem. This is an exercise given to all of you. Yeah. So pick up that one person in the hierarchy, you know, who's the person who's been a trouble for you, you know, about whom you have that negativity. Bring that person here. Think about that person. Yeah, and start meditating, you know, positive about that person. Start wishing well for that person, pray for that person, and see the magic it does to your consciousness into that relationship. Okay, will you do this homework for me? Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much. Very well. Yeah. How? Yeah, Madhushri has a question. Um, there you go. Kali needs my pleasure. How can we manage and differentiate prajalpa with giving attention to person whom we are with? <laughs> very, very sweet and very good question. Yes. So while we understand that uh, the most important person is the person whom we are with, the other extreme is getting in in engaged in prajalpa. <laughs> <laughs> very nice so so here's where the third part comes into the picture that is the most important thing to do is to do good to that person yeah so when we want to really do good to that person you know we should not encourage prajalpa you know what prajalpa gets uh, multiplied when we encourage that like let's say somebody comes and says you know what, uh, that so-and-so X and so-and-so Y, you know, they come and start with this expression, then, you know, you reciprocate. Huh, tell me what happened. Done. You know, <laughs> that is what is, uh, you know, encouraging prajan. So, uh, so if, uh, doing, what is doing good to that person, doing good to that person is, Keeping that person's consciousness in a pure state. Yeah, at least in sattvic mode. So always remember this one rule. If anybody comes to you and is with you, if you can take the responsibility of giving a delta X increase in their consciousness, that is actually doing good to that person. Yeah. So how can this be done? It can be done in many ways. Somebody comes to you, you can together read Gita, you know, let's read one verse together or together this read Bhagavatam or, you know, this is, this is one way which is amazing. Uh, you know, when I was in Pune, our teacher used to always do this. Whenever we go for a meeting with him, first thing he used to do is, he said, he used to say, sit with me. And he used to open one verse of Bhagavatam, read the verse, read the translation, read the purport, and then begin discussion. Yeah, first thing to do is read Bhagavatam together. So this is a very sweet habit. Yeah. So that's automatic delta X. So can you take responsibility for giving the delta X to that person? You know, with all the spirituality that you are cultivating. 
So uh, yeah, prajalpa uh, actually is a uh, natural tendency. If the other person is doing prajalpa, we can always navigate it. We can always stop it. Simply don't entertain it. The other person won't speak. The more we uh, enjoy and uh, we we don't we need not even respond. If we simply are attentive and we uh, we just give an ear, that itself is sufficient. You know that prajalpa will go on. So we should not even be a listener. We should be, uh, you know, actively divert it, uh, and in a way direct direct it to a better talk. So one or two times you uh, you direct it, the other person will understand that you know, oh no, this person, you know, they're not interested in my present pass. So in this, that way you're actually doing good to that person. I hope this helps, Madhushri. So try this uh, uh, practically, uh, where uh, in you know uh, in your interactions with your friends. And uh, so I mean, I have personally tried this, and I have seen my seniors also, uh, you know, uh, uh, practice this, and it has uh, it's been a uh, very very uh, good practice to stop present. Whenever there is a gossip, and if the gossip comes to you. You be the person who's like a wall where the gossip is ending. You know, not be like a bridge where the gossip goes to you, you know, through to you know higher realms. So that's how we can do it. Okay, I hope this helps. Yeah. So I will end the session. Any other questions? Yes. I will. Okay. So we will meet again in the next session. Um with the next topic in the theme. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna.